Welcome to the Bay Area Case Studies Virtual College Fair. My name is Jasmine. I'm going to serve as your facilitator for our session today. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping announcements. First, you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our amazing presenters at any point throughout our session today. Second, your camera and microphone are off so we cannot see or hear you. Third, this is just one of many different sessions that we are offering, so feel free to visit your registration site to sign up for additional sessions. And finally, this presentation is being recorded and you'll have access to that recording within about a week or so. With that said, I wanna share with you all that we have an amazing lineup today. Our lineup includes Carnegie Mellon University, Carleton College, University of Delaware, Trinity College, Pitzer College, and Regis University. With that said, I'm gonna go ahead and introduce our first presenter, Carnegie Mellon University. Thank you, Jasmine, and uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Justin Money. I'm an associate director in the Office of Admission at Carnegie Mellon, and I just want to spend a, a few minutes introducing you to the university. So Carnegie Mellon University is a medium-sized research university, home to about 6,400 undergraduate students and a freshman class each year between 16 and 1,700. We're located in the city of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, for anybody who's never uh, never been here before, that's all the way on the western side of the state of Pennsylvania. We are an urban campus located just a few miles from the downtown neighborhood of the city of Pittsburgh and nestled among the 90 different neighborhoods that, that the city uh, is made up of. Uh, our campus itself is just shy of a couple hundred acres and houses seven distinct colleges. When applying to Carnegie Mellon, a student does apply directly to one of our academic colleges or directly to one of our artistic programs. I wanna spend just a couple of minutes uh, briefly introducing those colleges. Then I'll discuss a, a few uh, characteristics that I think cut across the Carnegie Mellon community and close with a few quick words about our application process. So for the colleges, I will begin with our School of Computer Science. The School of Computer Science is home to our programs in computer science, artificial intelligence, computational biology, and human computer interaction. Next up would be our College of Engineering, which houses undergraduate programs in electrical and computer engineering, mechanical engineering, chemical engineering, materials sciences, uh, and civil and environmental engineering. Our Mellon College of Science is home to our mathematical sciences, biological sciences, chemistry, and physics departments. With the Tepper School of Business uh, being the next college, home to a single undergraduate major in business administration. Our Dietrich College of Humanities and Social Sciences is by far our most academically diverse college with over 60 different majors and minors. Spread from traditional humanities-based fields like creative writing and philosophy to quantitative social sciences, uh, fields like behavioral economics uh, and uh, statistics and machine learning. Our Heinz College is primarily a graduate level college, but they do co-host an inter-college uh, bachelor's degree program in information systems alongside the Dietrich College. And then finally, we have our College of Fine Arts, which houses five distinct schools in the fine arts that offer professional arts degrees, the conservatory-based programs of drama and music, and the studio-based programs of art, architect, and design. Regardless of which of these colleges at Carnegie Mellon you call home, there are a few uh, characteristics that help to define the Carnegie Mellon experience. The first is our, our hands-on approach to an education, the applied nature of the education. This is a place where you'll not only learn theory, you'll also have an opportunity to roll up your sleeves and to do work that matters, uh, to get onto the stage as a, a musician or into the lab as a chemist. The second is the interdisciplinary nature of a Carnegie Mellon education. This is an institution where you're surrounded by individuals whose talents are phenomenally different than your own. And learning alongside and from those individuals helps to set the experience apart. To give you an example, our Integrative Design Art and Technology Program, or Ideate for short, offers hands-on collaborative courses in fields like entrepreneurship, uh, sound design, learning media, intelligent environments. And these courses are all taught out of uh, the, the labs, studios, and maker spaces in our library, which is that glass and aluminum building that you see over my shoulder. 
And then the third and final theme that I want to mention is the diversity that you will find within our community and the core role that that diversity plays in our educational experience. As an institution, Carnegie Mellon brings together students from a wide array of lived experiences. Geographically, about 17% of our, our uh, first year students are international students representing over 50 different countries. Domestically, our students come from 48 uh, different states, the District of Columbia and Puerto Rico. About 15% of our, our first year students are uh, Black or African American, Latinx or Native American students. About 49% identify as male, 50% is female, and 1% is gender non-binary. So collectively, these three themes of an applied education, an interdisciplinary approach, and a diverse community help to define the experience. In terms of the application process, we are a common application school. We practice a holistic review process, which is something you'll hear reinforced tonight, meaning we're looking for students that are both academic, artistic fits, as well as will impact our community. On the financial aid side of the house, we use the FAFSA and the CSS profile, and we do guarantee to meet a uh, full demonstrated financial need with fee waivers available for each of our applications. With that, I am at my time. I'd invite any questions you have in the Q&A box, and I'll uh, drop my contact info uh, into the chat. Thank you all very much. Hi friends, I'm gonna jump in um, and share my screen with you to chat a little bit about Carleton. Okay, uh, so Carleton is a small private liberal arts college in Northfield, Minnesota. We have about 2000 students on campus. We are small by design. Uh, in terms of some really important academic things to note, first and foremost, this is a place that demands a lot of you. It is very academically rigorous. If you're someone who really is excited about learning and doesn't mind a fair amount of homework, you might really dig Carleton. I think the other thing to note is the liberal arts philosophy really colors everything that you do on campus in terms of your coursework, off-campus studies, papers, projects, senior thesis, all of it, right? I remember thinking, what a difference it was to go from high school where everything was sort of black and white, you know, all the subjects I discussed sort of stayed in their own curricular boxes. And at Carleton, so much of my focus was the area that lived between different curricular areas, right? That gray spot between the classes I was taking. And I loved that. Um, getting to sort of revel in interdisciplinary study constantly, right, was, was pretty neat. Another important thing to note is that we use trimesters at Carleton. That's fairly um, unique that not a ton of other colleges do this. Most of the time we see semesters or quarters. Uh, our students go to class for three 10 week terms. 10 weeks means it moves really fast, right? So if you're someone who is like Remy and you were a big time procrastinator in high school, uh, you kind of have to change those habits pretty quickly when you end up in a place like Carleton. The trade-off is that our students take three classes at a time, right? So you're moving quickly through coursework uh, in the trimester system, but you're taking fewer classes at once. Over the span of a year, this tends to mean that we take more classes overall, right? Nine instead of eight annually. It also means there's a fair amount of flexibility, right? With courses coming up uh, three times a year if they need to, if there's a lot of academic demand for them on campus, right? Uh, in terms of residential life, I always like to highlight that not only is, is housing guaranteed at Carleton all four years, most students live on campus all four years, and that is also by design. We think the residential experience is a really important part of your Carleton experience, right? So it ends up being about 95% of our students who spend all four years on campus. Um, I mentioned before, we have about 2,000 students. They're from all 50 states. They're from 42 countries. About a third of our students identify as BIPOC, and about 12% identify as international students. Um, in terms of a gender breakdown, we are about 51% female, uh, but 48%, I believe, male and about 1% gender non-binary, right? Um, there's at least one member of every major religion represented on campus. There's over 100 different languages represented on campus. Um, just a wealth of diversity in this tiny little Minnesota town. One of the things I loved most about Carlson was the sense of balance that I, not only that I was able to find, but that I felt like my peers had as well. I knew when I was looking at colleges, I wanted a place with really strong academics. And that drove a lot of where I was looking at and, and a lot of my college search process, but I didn't want to spend my four years constantly thinking only about academics, feeling stressed out all the time, feeling a sense of intensity that sort of covered up everything else I was trying to do on campus. And every Carleton student I've met is more than a student, right? Everyone has something that they're doing outside of class. 
Typically we find it's more like five, six or seven somethings. So if you're someone who likes to be really involved outside of class, there's certainly space for that, right? There are hundreds of different organizations uh, and Carleton's campus actually bumps right up against downtown Northfield, right? So if you ever wanna get off campus, it's a three minute walk from my office, a two minute walk from some of the dorms. It's very, very close, very accessible. We're also only about 40 miles south of the Twin Cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul. Right? So if you're nervous about coming to a small town, that's okay. It's totally normal. Um, it's only about 20,000 people that live in Northfield, right? Most of our students are from larger cities. Um, so it's definitely going to be a transition, uh, but you, you always have the option to get off campus if you feel like you want a little bit more space. Uh, in terms of campus resources, I always like to point these out because I think many students come to, to these sort of high achieving and, and selective campuses feeling like I'm, I'm super smart and you are, but a lot of times students feel like they need to do this work themselves. And that's really not what we're going for. Yes, the academic bar at Carleton is really high, but there's never an expectation that you're doing anything on your own. People are here, offices are here, these systems are here to support you, right? Not just in terms of your academics. We want to make sure you are physically healthy, emotionally healthy, spiritually healthy, right? As you are here working through this coursework, okay? So I won't go through all of this. I like to just show a snapshot because I want students to be aware that, um, you know, we're gonna challenge you, but never to the point where you should feel like you're alone and struggling um, with whatever it is you're dealing with on campus. If you find that Carleton is a place that you might be interested in, we are a common app school, we're a QuestBridge school, we're a coalition app school. All those application platforms are really different. So I'd encourage you to find the one that works best for you. It is always free to apply to Carleton, regardless of which application you use, right? There should never be a fee. Uh, I'm sure every school on this uh, presentation will say they use a holistic review process, and that's true for Carleton as well. Yes, we're looking at your transcript, your grades, the courses you take, test scores if you choose to submit them, but we're looking at everything else too, right? Hopefully you got an idea from the case studies process about how that works, okay? Um, finally, I wanna point out, we do meet full financial need all four years, right? So please don't let that sticker tag, or excuse me, that sticker price scare you off. Most students don't pay that when they're attending Carleton. Uh, so I'm gonna wrap it up and turn it over to my next colleague. Thanks, Thanks Remy. Let me go ahead and share my screen and tell you a little bit about the University of Delaware. My name is Chuck Lydiard. I'm the Assistant Director of West Coast Admissions based in Long Beach, California. And I've worked for the University of Delaware for seven years. And most of my conversations with Californians has to do with the fact, where is Delaware located? And what is the quickest and most convenient airport to fly into from California? So this conversation begins with this screenshot here. We are conveniently located in between four major East Coast cities. Philadelphia is the closest for international airport and travel, but you can see that we also are close to Washington, D.C., Baltimore, and New York City as well. We're really close to the Atlantic Ocean, and we're on right off the I-95 corridor, which runs all the way from Maine down to Florida. So we're actually really, really easy and convenient to get to. And, you know, we're located in Newark, Delaware, and we're on the train line as well. So you can take the SEPTA commuter train line to Philadelphia or the Amtrak from D.C. or all the way up to New York City. So we're not in the middle of nowhere, not hard to get to. And where we have a lot of social and academic urban options at Newark, we are actually a real suburban campus. You can see we're one of those East Coast classics with a lot of red brick, the Georgian architecture with the white columns, and we have a lot of green space as well. From the top to bottom of the screen, you see right down the center, we have this wide open green space, which we actually call the green. And it's really the hub and center of campus life. You know, on the perimeter, you have dormitories, research laboratories, academic buildings, faculty offices, you have uh, student centers as well. And right in the center is Memorial Hall there, and that divides North and South Green. And it's important to know we have a lot of green space because we are going to be the largest school you hear from today in this room here. We have 18,000 undergraduates, you know, and we only have 6,000 graduates on top of that. So being the flagship tier one research university or a public university in the state of Delaware, 75% uh, of our total population is undergraduate. We have a 13 to one faculty to student, student to faculty ratio, and 98% of all of our classes are taught by professors. Um, it's also important to know, being that we are the flagship university in the state of Delaware, 70% of our total students are not from the state. Part of that is because Delaware is small, but predominantly our population is coming from Chicago-based East, 
but we have a very strong presence along the Pacific coast and the Midwest as well. One thing that I would say distinguishes our campus from perhaps others in the Mid-Atlantic is the fact that we have this wonderful college town vibe. And part of that has to do with the fact that we have a main street that intersects our green space that from the first year village or the center of campus, it's a 10 minute walk to Main Street. No matter where you go to school, you're gonna to wanna to go off campus at least once or twice a week. So no, at the University of Delaware where you can bring a car, in my opinion, you don't need it to technically go off campus. And what you have on Main Street here is 80 different unique boutiques, restaurants and shops that are technically off campus, but that just adds to the, the aura of our college town. And you'll find our students studying, meeting before a Division I football or another athletic event. Uh, you'll also find uh, them just enjoying Grotto's Pizza or just you know, meeting together in small groups to work on a class project. So just know that it, it, it adds to the campus culture and the fact that you can spread out. Where we might be a larger school, we have a lot of spaces to spread out. So it doesn't feel like we're the size that we are. Academically, we have a lot of different majors and minors for our students to choose from. We're divided into eight different colleges and you can be directly admitted into any of our 150 plus or 150 majors that we have. I feel that most students on the west coast know us for the health sciences and engineering but we're actually a true liberal arts curriculum at our core. We have uh, some more competitive majors that I definitely feel that you should consider uh, applying directly to on the coalition or common application if you're interested. Our most competitive major is our direct entry nursing program, also chemical engineering, biomedical engineering, and mechanical engineering are tend to be a little bit more competitive than some of our other majors. We're also the number one ranked physical therapy school in the nation. So exercise science and sports health as well is a little bit more competitive to get into. But one thing I love about the University of Delaware community and the students is actually each year, 20% of our students come in as university study students. So that means they have multiple interests. They wanna come in, they wanna adjust to college life. They have their own advising core within the university studies department. And then they're able to decide whether it be one semester or after their, the end of their sophomore year, where they're gonna be transitioning into. So just know that you can come in as undecided and have some wonderful support uh, as you go through your liberal arts curriculum as well. But it is very common for our students to really uh, dive in and to diversify their academic experience by adding one, if not two different minors or even double major and, and graduate in four years. For a public university, we boast a very good four-year graduation rate. Since I've been at Delaware, it's been at 73% in four years. Very quickly, as I wrap up here, we have different ways to make our community smaller. We bring in 4,400 first year students each year, but the Honors College is perfect for students who want to enrich their academic experience and have a smaller community. Uh, we take 600 students each year uh, and it's diverse between our eight different colleges and university studies as well. Another living learning community is the World Scholars. We were actually the very first school to do travel abroad and World Scholars begin their travel abroad experience with other first year students that very first semester. And as I wrap up, the Diamond Challenge is the number one ranked high school youth entrepreneurship competition in the United States. If you're interested, go to diamondchallenge.org. It is a global presence as well. And here's my contact information. Take a screenshot, but I'm going to put it in the chat as well. Thank you very, very much for your time. I'm going to pass it on to my other colleague. Thank you, Chuck. Uh, so my name is Emily Petersell. I am an Associate Director of Admissions at Trinity College uh, in Hartford, Connecticut, and hopefully you can all see my screen now. Uh, so Trinity College, we are a small liberal arts college uh, located, like I said, in Hartford. It is the capital city of Connecticut, so it's the seat of state government. Um, if you're not familiar uh, totally with uh, East Coast geography, uh, you'll see on the map there that Hartford is right in the middle of the state of Connecticut. We're about two hours south of the city of Boston and two hours north of New York City. Um, 
We are not a college town. Um, this is we are very much uh, in an urban center in New England, uh, and we are very proud of our identity as an urban liberal arts college. And I'll talk a little bit about that in just a minute. Uh, we are a, a student body of about 2100 undergraduate students for an institution of our size. It is a pretty diverse student body. Students come from uh, 47 different states across the US as well as uh, the slide says 76 countries, but actually with our recently admitted class of 2025, we are on track to go above 80 different countries represented uh, by our students. And so we are quite uh, an international uh, institution. Uh, speaking a little bit about the academic experience, so because we are a liberal arts college, there is a lot to choose from and there's a lot of flexibility that characterizes a Trinity degree program. Uh, so we do have 41 different majors and 28 minors to choose from. You don't declare your major until partway through your sophomore year. So coming into Trinity, uh, you don't need to uh, apply to a specific program. You'll notice among our majors, it's a combination of some traditional liberal arts subjects, things that you would expect to see like history, English, modern languages, economics, uh, but you'll also see some uh, more innovative programs that you won't necessarily find at every small liberal arts college out there. Some of those that we're particularly proud of would include our ABED accredited Bachelor's of Science and Engineering degree. We're really proud to be one of only a handful of small liberal arts colleges that allow you to get that fully accredited engineering degree while getting the a small liberal arts college experience. Uh, we also were the first college to offer a major in human rights, so that's something we're proud of as well. About 15% of our students do pursue a double major, and in addition to that, 25% of our students pursue some sort of interdisciplinary major, such as neuroscience or public policy and law. Uh, so we definitely get a lot of students coming to us who are interested in a wide variety of different things or understanding the cross-section of different subjects. We don't have a core curriculum, but we do have distribution requirements, which means that each of our students is required to take just one class in each of these six areas, which are arts, humanities, social science, natural science, numeric and symbolic reasoning, and a global requirement as well. Finally, every student wraps up their Trinity experience with some sort of guided research project, whether it's a senior capstone project, a thesis, or a senior research seminar in their major. Uh, I said that I wanted to talk a little bit about our identity as an urban liberal arts college. So uh, oftentimes I will get the question from students and families, what makes Trinity different? Why is Trinity unique? Or what makes Trinity different from other small liberal arts colleges out there? And that's a great question. Most of what you saw on the last slide you're gonna see a lot of those same things at other liberal arts colleges. So for me, the real difference maker for Trinity is always location, location, location. The fact that we are in a capital city means that there is a lot of opportunity in our own backyard for students to take what they're learning in the classroom and really apply it in real world situations. A couple of examples of that. So uh, we do have over 200 Trinity specific internship opportunities in and around the city of Hartford. That means companies and organizations around the city are actually holding spots for Trinity students to come and work with them every year. Uh, this includes spots at local hospitals in the Hartford area for our pre-med students. Uh, it does include our legislative internship at the state capitol uh, for students in political science and public policy. Uh, about 80% of our students complete at least one internship before they graduate. Many do two or more. And we do allow students to do internships for credit towards their degree. Our Center for Hartford Engagement and Research is the umbrella office that uh, helps organize all of the other ways in which students can engage in the Hartford community uh, outside of internships. Uh, you can get involved in research projects in the city, research fellowships, and also very common are our community learning courses. Community learning courses are classes taught by Trinity faculty members that require students to get off campus and engage with uh, the community, with a population or an organization that they may have been learning about in class. About a third Third of our students take at least one community learning course before they graduate. Not necessarily related to Hartford, but it is related to getting off campus. About 60% of our students do choose to study away before they graduate. We have lots of programs, both domestic and international. We have programs on uh, every continent other than Antarctica. So if you're thinking about study away, you can definitely do that with us. Our campus community is a very much a residential living learning community. In a typical year, more than 90% of our students do live on campus in our housing. 
We have over 140 different student clubs, organizations, and community and cultural houses for students to get involved in, as well as 30 different varsity athletic teams. We are division three for all of our varsity sports, and we compete in the NESCAC group, which is the New England Small College Athletic Conference. Uh, finally, I'll wrap up with just some quick highlights about the admissions and financial aid process. Um, we do practice holistic review. Uh, we have been test score optional since 2015. That's not a policy that's going to change. Uh, and we do waive the application fee for all first generation to college students. For financial aid, we are committed to meeting 100% of your calculated financial need. We do also award merit scholarships and we do uh, award them to students during the admissions process so you don't have to apply separately for merit scholarships. Uh, that's all the time I have. Uh, happy to take questions through the Q&A right now. I will also share my information so you can follow up later, but thank you very much for listening and I'll pass it to the next person. Thanks, Emily. Awesome. Well, hey, everybody. My name is Erin Griffin. I'm an assistant director of admission at Pitzer College down in Southern California. Pitzer is a small private liberal arts college located in Claremont. So we're just about 35 miles east of Los Angeles inland. We are about 1100 students at Pitzer. So we are a very small college community. Um, but we are also part of the Claremont Colleges or the Claremont Consortium. If you have heard of us, if you have not heard of us, we are a system of five liberal arts colleges and two graduate universities. So we do share resources. As a student at Pitzer or at any one of the five colleges or the five C's, you can take classes across every campus. We share some central resources like our library, health and counseling services. We share athletics programs, student organizations and clubs, things like that. Always happy to answer more questions, but I like to set the stage. Pitzer is actually the youngest of the Claremont Colleges, founded in 1963, and we're very much a product of our time. This was at the heart of the civil rights movement, Vietnam War protests, environmental movements here in Southern California. So five core values really distinguish our approach to academic and extracurricular programs, both on and off campus. Social justice and social responsibility, interdisciplinary learning, very much at the heart of a liberal arts curriculum environmental sustainability on and off campus, global understanding, intercultural learning, and student engagement. So I'll share a little bit more about these as I chat a bit more about Pitzer as a whole, but I always like to keep these values in mind. To chat a bit more about the academic and student experience at Pitzer, Pitzer is a very academically flexible place. We have about 40 majors on campus and about 22 different minors. These are gonna span the gamut in terms of social sciences, humanities, STEM, as a liberal arts and sciences college, you really have options in all of those different fields. About 25% of our students will opt into a double major at some point on campus, but at Pitzer, you also have the chance to combine a major. You can self-design a major pretty easily if your interests are falling kind of outside of our traditional course offerings. We do also have distribution requirements rather than a core curriculum, and they are very broad. We really want students to explore a variety of disciplines, but also have a lot of flexibility in taking classes that are of interest to them. Community engagement and service is also huge for us on campus. Social justice, I mentioned, social responsibility being one of those core values. One of our distribution requirements is actually our social justice theory and social responsibility praxis course pairing. So students will take a class like agricultural economics or Latinx community health, diving into social justice theory around one of these equity issues, and then going out into the field and working alongside a community organization to really see how that works in practice. This is gonna be a big part of many of our community engagement ventures and partnerships in the local area, all kind of diving into justice behind the work that we're doing. All of our students participate in some sort of service during their time on campus, and we end up committing about 100,000 service hours across the board. We are a very politically and socially active place as well. So we have a student body who does a shared governance model with our faculty and staff on campus. Students sit on every executive committee that we have at Pitzer. So they have the chance to participate in some of our major institutional decision making, deciding which faculty members are receiving tenure, deciding which murals are gonna get painted on campus, lots of different ways to dive into that action. Pretty consistently ranked number one most politically active student body. And I think that really rings true in terms of how we get involved with local politics and social issues, but also how students get involved with governance and institutional change making at Pitzer. 
I mentioned intercultural understanding and global understanding being a big part of how we were founded and one of our values as well. And this is certainly embodied through our study abroad programs. We have upwards of 60 different programs offered every year, and eight of those are actually going to be direct run through Pitzer. So this is Pitzer faculty, staff, research facilities in these other countries, which really just has a stronger emphasis on cultural and language immersion. You do not have to have taken the language before you go abroad on a Pitzer program. You'll do a primer course, and then you'll take a kind of full-time language load once you're there staying with a homestay the entire time. And part of that will always be a month long internship or community engagement component. We don't want you to just repeat your Pitzer experience when you go abroad, but we do want you to go abroad with our values in mind, really excited to challenge yourself and to dive into some of those community issues on a deeper level. Just over half of our student body will go abroad at some point during their time on campus. You can actually study away up to three times, the equivalent of two semesters in one summer program. And we have also been a top Fulbright producer for, I believe, over the last 15 or so years. So post-graduation, heading out on an international program to either teach English or do research is very popular for many of our students. Last but not least, environmental sustainability. I like to say this is one of the most visible values on Pitzer's campus. Our campus is going to look a lot different than some of our peer institutions, both within the Claremonts and the consortium, as well as across the country. We are mostly drought tolerant native California species and landscaping. And so you'll see a lot of cacti, a lot of succulents. We also have a farm to table philosophy in our dining hall. So all of the food is local and fresh. Many of our buildings and residence halls are gonna be LEED certified. So students can very easily live sustainably while they're on campus. And several of our academic programs also have a strong environmental focus. Environmental um, analysis tends to be one of our most popular majors on campus. If you're really interested in studying environmental science, policy, human impacts of climate change, all of the above, it's a great program to explore that further, as well as research spaces like the Robert Redford Conservancy at Pitzer, which dives specifically into climate change and its impacts on communities in Southern California. There is a lot that I could talk about with Pitzer, but I'm going to wrap up there and pass it off to our last presenter. Please feel free to ask me any questions for the rest of the show. Thanks, everybody. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Sydney Schumann. I'm one of the assistant directors of admissions at Regis University. I obviously cannot get my PowerPoint to pull up normally. So here we go. All right. Uh, okay. All right. Hopefully, you guys can all see my PowerPoint at this point. All right. So Regis University is a Jesuit Catholic institution located in Denver, Colorado. Um, we are a Jesuit. Catholic institution. So one of 27 Jesuit schools in the US, you probably know Santa Clara, USF, Loyola Marymount, Gonzaga, all those. So we are the only one in the Rocky Mountain region, so mountain time zone. So if you are interested in being at a Catholic Jesuit institution in the Rocky Mountains close to the, uh, go skiing, our, we're your best shot, shot there. Um, we are a liberal arts and sciences university as well. So strong in that liberal arts, but also very strong in our sciences. Um, we have the best nursing program in the state. So, and it's a direct entry nursing program. We have a lot of students going into pre-pharmacy, pre-PT, pre-OT. We have a health and exercise science uh, majors as well. Um, all of our majors are listed here. So with that, tons of different majors for students to choose from. Um, the top three most popular majors students are applying to at Regis are nursing. Again, most popular uh, program because it is the direct entry program. Um, second one is business administration. And third most popular major students are applying into at Regis is undeclared. Um, we really encourage students to come in undeclared and really kind of figure out what their path is while they're here. We don't expect every 17, 18, 19 year olds know exactly what they want to do yet. Um, so we give them two full years to declare their major while taking some of those liberal arts courses, figuring out which path is the best for them. A lot of our majors, if you can see some of the specifications and little um, one, two and three next to it are offered as minors. They also combine with different master's programs to get your advanced degree sooner, or they give you opportunities to earn direct entry to our BSN, Doctor of Pharmacy, Doctor of PT, Doctor of OT programs here on campus. We are a teaching university. So there are two types of these universities out there. There's teaching universities and a research institution. So we are a teaching university. That means that our professors are paid to teach. Um, it means that they're going to be in the classroom with you. Classes are around 15, 16 people per class. Very much discussion-based. You'll always be working with your professor. You're not being taught by a TA. Um, so very much that small discussion-based classroom here at Regis. Our first year experience, um, 
includes kind of our first year writing intensive course and almost every uh, course, you, every institution you're probably looking at will look have some type of writing 101 course. Ours are more specific because we want our students to really think about specific topics in relating to the world. So here are some of the subjects I've been offered in the past and each one of them have a fun field trip component to it to get you in, um, familiar with the city of the city of Denver and the state of Colorado. Uh, so one example of the climbing life, you actually get to spend a full weekend out in the mountains doing hiking, climbing, all that good stuff. Uh, all right. When it comes to study abroad, we have a ton of different ways of students can, that students can study abroad. Um, we have our full semester programs as well as short-term immersive travel programs for those students who are a little more hesitant about going abroad for a full semester. Um, that includes the way it works is that you do a full semester on campus and you do their fall or spring break, you're doing an immersive short-term travel program in different parts of the state or different parts of the world. So lots of options for you there. If you do want to do a full uh, semester study abroad program, we do offer those as well in many different countries um, around the world. Our internships really range all over the place in Denver. We also have connections with other Jesuit schools that you're able to use the Jesuit networks to find different internships in different parts of the US. So if you want to go back to California and you want to work in LA or San Francisco or San Jose, um, you can use the schools, the Jesuit schools located in that area to find really great internships. So. Um, Locally, we do have a lot of great uh, partnerships that our students are working at. So Aval the Avalanche, the Rapids, um, other, other big names like that, uh, sports wise and out of sports. Um, we have a lot of different partnerships for students who are interested in business, who are interested in the pre-med track, um, or if you wanna travel and go to DC for a full semester, we do have our full semester um, Washington Center internship where you can work for a different nonprofit or different government agency um, and spend a semester out there. When it comes to our student life, um, we are located right off I-70 corridor, right in going straight into the Rockies. So if you are someone that's involved, really wants to go skiing, wants to be outdoors, the Colorado, state of Colorado has 300 days of sun. So you really have a lot of opportunities to go camping, hiking, um, skiing, snowshoeing, snowboarding, whatever is your thing. And tying into that, we have our outdoor adventure program. So our OAP or outdoor adventure program is um, the biggest club on campus, they provide a lot of different events for students to go out into the mountains. I believe they host like two a weekend. Um, so you can go hiking, whitewater rafting, snowshoeing, ice fishing, uh, li literally the list goes on. So any way you want to get outdoors, OAP is going to be your place. Um, they also provide rental programs for you to rent bikes, hiking gear, and camping gear. So you don't have to spend hundreds of dollars buying all this, all this stuff. You really can just rent it through Regis. Um, we are D2 in athletics. We do have club and intramural sports as well. Um, but one other thing, we do have our first tax program. So if you do decide to attend Regis, tying into that OAP program, it's kind of a pre-orientation program for you to get your familiar with the mountains, go out and go camping and meet about 20 or 30 other new friends. So when it comes to our location, we are located in Northwest Denver, only about 10, 15 minutes from downtown. So if you wanna to go to any of our uh, the, short games, so going to Coors, going to Mile High, um, only about 10 minutes or so. Um, if you want to go downtown, whether it's some really great restaurants, museums, concerts, all that's about 15, 20 minutes away. Red Rocks Park and Amphitheater is the photo list shown on the left-hand side. It's only about 20 minutes from campus, and it um, hosts a lot of really great hiking spots, really great concerts, movies at the state, at the amphitheater, really kind of a great way to be at the start of the mountains. Um, so we're only about 20 minutes from the start of the mountains, including Boulder as well. Only 30, 45 minutes from uh, Denver International Airport. And plus when you go, and when you go a little bit farther uh, out into the mountains, you're at some of the best ski resorts in the country. When it comes to our admissions, we are on the common application. We also have our own specific Regis application, but we encourage all students to just use whatever is easiest for them. But if you're doing stuff in the common app, just throw our names in there as well. It is a free application, so no worries there. Um, for our, what we require is your GPA. So we want to see your high school transcript. We want to see your application, which includes that essay and at least one recommendation from a teacher or a counselor. We are test optional and we will be test optional moving forward. So no need to send that to us unless you really feel you need to. And um, we obviously do take AP, IB and dual en enrollment courses. So if you have taken those and passed those exams, you're welcome to send those over to us and get out of some of those uh, core requirements. Um, we are on rolling admissions. Oops. Nope. Course. Sorry about that. All right, we are on rolling missions, so you can apply um, really whenever. And we have a May March first deadline for maximum consideration of financial aid, but we do will take students applying later on as well. And if you do want to go into our nursing program, that application is due and uh, December first. 
99% of our students receive some type of financial aid. So on the right-hand side, you kind of see what our price typically looks like. Um, so and we are now gonna go ahead and transition over to our Q&A. With that said, I would love for all of our panelists to return. Feel free to turn your cameras on um, and unmute yourself. And I'm gonna go ahead and pose a question to the group. Uh, for all of our attendees, if you still have any questions, feel free to drop them in that Q&A section. The question is, what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? And feel free to respond in the order in which you present it. All right, so for Carnegie Mellon, my favorite tradition is the painting of the fence, which you also see in my Zoom background there. It's the campus billboard. Undergraduate students can paint advertisements, well as advocacy maps, but there's a whole uh, set of rules and, and history behind it. Uh, take one of our virtual tours online. The tour guides love talk fence. Uh, so my favorite tradition is the cookie house on campus. Um, so long story short, there was um, a friend of Carlton essentially who passed away. And when she did, she willed her house, her estate, everything to Carlton um, under the premise that it be used for baking and always fully stocked with baked goods. So it's open 24 seven, uh, stocked with games and a piano and things like that. So you can go play some Scrabble or Monopoly or whatever um, and bake cookies anytime, day or night. Well, that's kind of hard to top. <laughs> so I really like one of our newer traditions at the University of Delaware, and that's called U Dance. And I'll let you know something. Anytime they can put U and D next to each other in any sort of name or anything, they're going to do that at the University of Delaware. But U Dance is a campus-wide, and in fact, it's actually just engages even the alumni around the world in helping raise money for the Be Positive Foundation, which really does go towards uh, research for pediatric, can pediatric cancer and support for families and uh, little ones that might be going through that. And essentially what it is, is it, we raise money all year long and come together in mid-March for a 12-hour dance marathon. And last uh, year, uh, it was virtual last year, but the year before that, when it was in person, we raised $2.4 million for the Be Positive Foundation. And it's really just a big celebration of life. We have the cancer survivors that come and talk about it. You just literally go out and dance and it's just kind of celebrating everyone. And when I say worldwide is because here in California, I was engaging over the past years of uh, alumni that would get together and have their own little mini uh, U dance celebration as well. So it's really cool. Awesome. You dance sounds like fun, but I'm still thinking about that cookie house right now. I'm not going to lie. Um, so my favorite tradition at Trinity is actually um, the International Trinity Hip Hop Festival. Uh, so every year on an annual basis in spring, it actually just passed for this year. Uh, Trinity hosts in collaboration with the city of Hartford an international hip hop festival where we bring in um, hip hop musicians and dancers, groups from all over the world um, who come to share their art and teach workshops uh, and it's just a really awesome multi-day event uh, and it's something that uh, Trinity is very involved in in collaboration with the city and the community around us and so um, that's I think one of the more um, awesome things that we do on an annual basis. So in 1973 when Pitzer was just 10 years old the Kahootek comet was headed towards earth and was set to destroy the planet and Pitzer students said well we got to have one last big hurrah music and arts festival before that happens called Kahootek. Naturally, the earth did not shatter that day and we have had Kahootek every year since. I love the music festivals at Pitzer and that story. Well, these are all very fun and not anywhere where I was gonna go with our traditions. Mine is very random, it's very unique, um, but I love Halloween and so does everyone at Regis. So we invite all of the uh, community members to bring their kids, their dogs themselves um, to campus. And pretty much all the professors and students are out there with tables, with candy, just giving out everything. And I love Halloween. So I think that's the most fun thing on campus. But we do also have Ranger Week, which is kind of just happened this past week. It's the last week before finals start, kind of a decompression. They bring in bands, obviously pre-COVID bands, food trucks, all that good stuff. Um, but students were still able to do it this year, which is great. But yeah. Thank you all. 
with that said, this concludes our virtual college fair for today. But I have a few closing announcements. As you exit from this Zoom session, a survey will appear. It's approximately four questions, but please complete the survey. It's extremely helpful for us as we aim to improve our virtual college fair offerings. I also want to remind you that you can sign up for additional sessions by visiting our registration site. And finally, a recording of this presentation will be available within about a week or so. With that said, I want to thank our panelists for joining us, but I also want to thank our attendees. I hope everyone has a great evening.